Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Adventures in Welding. My name is Ken Haylock and I am the proud owner of a welding bench bought off eBay, a cheapo gasless MIG welder, actually two, that one and then that one there that I bought a few years ago that promptly broke. It looks like it might even be the same thing or very similar. Um, gasless MIG welders don't use, as the name implies, gas. They use special wire that has um, the flux that uh, shields the, um, the metal uh, embedded in the wire so that when, when you strike the arc they generate their own gas shield. And a um, 160 amp arc welder, another Audi purchase. Um, this is very cheap and I know, I, I realised very quickly why it was so cheap. It was so cheap because it wouldn't, it draws more than 13 amps so it requires a special supply or you keep popping breakers. However, I solved that problem by having a high current supply pipe straight into the um, to the electrics. So there you go, that can that runs my um, arc welder. Uh, recently I've also obtained a selection of pieces of scrap metal. Okay assortment of steel offcuts from my friendly neighbourhood metal recycling uh, people and I've had fun welding them together variously. Um, anyway, I now have a project that I'm going to attempt with this collection of equipment. Um, the uh, project is to make a steel table and shelf to sit in that gap between those plastic uh, drawers and the workbench unit and sit over the, um, the cheapo or the compressor. Uh, but more than that if you look down here, you'll see I've got a telescopic workshop um, air hose reel. Mm. Lovely piece of kit. It's designed to be um, bolted to something. Typically, I think it'll be a wall or a metal plate. And as you can see from the offcuts of wood on the, on the foot there, there you go. The uh, my attempts to bolt it to the wooden floor of my workbench, even with a very large fillet plate and some giant washers, uh, didn't work well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bolt it to my metal table above the compressor. So I have to basically build something that is um, structurally capable of supporting that. And I th thought, you know, it's not exactly the fourth bridge. It's not a massive engineering challenge, but I reckon it will keep me um, keep me suitably entertained uh, and give me enough of a challenge that um, I will be able to deliver a functioning um, table and a mounting for that um, that hose reel there. Um, anyway. That's the project I have in mind. Um, in addition to my selection of welders, I also have a selection of um, welding gauntlets and wire brushes and stuff that have come with the three welders I've bought. I've also got this very nifty piece of equipment here, which is a, a solar darkening welding helmet. Basically you can see through it until you successfully strike an arc with the welder then it all goes dark 
I've actually got a couple of those and some um, rather more mundane ones that you hold in your hand for um, people who are just spectating. I'm not sure welding is a spectator sport, but the option is there. Um, I've also got a selection of clamps. In fact, I just bought another one. Um, this will be a. Uh, there you go. Uh, set of mole grips, big ones. Because um, basically, I'm going to be putting bits of metal together and welding together, and I need something to hold them together whilst I'm working on them. And mole grips seem like a, a good place to start, as any. I've also, as you can see here from this piece of metal that I've, random metal, it's an old PC drive cage that I've welded to this old set of very heavy scales using the MIG welder. I've also invested in a pair of these. They're compound action tin man's shears, what they're called. They're basically scissors of steel. So, as you can see, this is a fairly robust looking piece of metal. There you go. And sorry about this, cameraman I'm not. This is all work left handed. So if you, uh, if you ever wanted to cut a complex shape, shape out of sheet metal, these are not expensive. I actually picked these up at the local farm shop, bizarrely. That's a shop for farmers rather than a place selling Ponzi Waitrose style comestibles. But uh, yeah, most uh, tool catalogues will have this in. You can probably pick them up from Screwfix for all I know. Uh, 250 millimeter compound action tin man shears. Very handy for for cutting metal. Right. Uh, yes, I suppose I'd just uh, that's some sheet steel. Go into here. Lots and lots of welding rods, um, more gauntlets, wire for the MIG welder, a bag with another solar another self-darkening helmet in, etc. etc. And then on the floor down here, oh what a mess. Um, it's a novel use for one of those domestic fire blankets. I reckon one of the biggest challenges I've got is not setting fire to these pieces of old carpet that's checking the floor in the garage. Now underneath there is concrete. Now if it does catch fire, it's not the end of the world because it's not exactly going to burn down the garage. Famous last words. But, um, but I reckon that fire blanket, which I put down there as a mat, to catch all the sparks and bits of molten metal that drop on the floor underneath a welding exercise. I reckon that that should save the carpet and put out any fires. But uh, needless to say, whenever I'm welding there will be a kettle full of water nearby and I can tip over anything that looks like it might be about to burst into flames. Okay, so that can go in the uh, rubbish pile and the next video in this series will be me welding things or cutting things or swearing volubly or all of the above.